Hello Zebraherd! In today's episode of Detective Pikachu Returns, we have all the clues we need to solve the case of the missing jewel. Who is the culprit and will we be able to catch him in time? Let's find out together! Okay, we finally made it back to the dentist residence where hopefully we can learn a little bit more about what's going on. We got a lot of information from our little trip with Growlithe and I don't think there's really too much we need to do here except for just find Tim, who should be in here. Hi, Tim. Mm -hmm. We're back, Tim. Thanks, both of you. Are you getting down off of Growlithe now, Pikachu? Yes. Can you get down on your own? Please, who do you think I am? I can't help with this. Cool. Poor Pikachu, not good with heights. Mm -hmm. How did your investigation with Growlithe go, Pikachu? About that, Tim, we found some incredible evidence. Really? What is it? Well, you see. And that's about it. Wow, good work, Pikachu. I think we're definitely closer to solving the case now. Yep, now hurry up and open your case notebook. Let's think this over together and organize all the info we've got. Sure, okay, open the case notebook and do begin to do something. Let's talk to Growlithe too. She's asking what you want. You wanna go talk to her or have her track a scent? Ask her for okay. help. Hey Growlithe, let me hop back. Oh no, that's not really what I meant to do. Okay, so I thought we could ask her a couple more questions. I don't think there's really too mm -hmm. much more I can do here. So, um, yeah, let's get, get off and start deducing. I really don't think there's too much more that we need to do besides deducing, so. Okay, let's start deducing. I'm working on it. So first, how can we prove Barnes' is in innocence? Right over here. Hold on, I gotta go over here and look at the clues. So, note from someone, a no trubbish found. It says to let Ponyard into the mansion after Barnes leaves. The lock on the jewel case. The lock on the jewel case, it's still locked. Ducklet bought coffee beans. Ducklet went to Hayat Cafe to buy coffee beans. So, a lot of interesting things going on here. Let's begin deducing with our information. Okay. Is there something that can prove Barnes is innocence? Let's think of something that could be convincing to the police as well. With the note, which is, was, was written by someone other than Barnes, the note Trubbish found said, after Barnes leaves, that means the real culprit is someone else. By showing that Barnes couldn't have opened the jewel case, Mr. Dennis is the only one who can unlock the jewel case, so it would have been impossible for Barnes to steal the jewel. I mean, I suppose so, but if you had a Pokemon with him, like Ponyard, you could still sort of set that up. We need to prove that he wasn't the one who did that. Because now we have a note that sort of points to that being the case. So that's probably the most useful thing. But by showing that Barnes' partner Ducklet had nothing to do with the crime, Ducklet only went out to go shopping. That means her partner Barnes likely had nothing to do with the crime. These two are good leads, but they're not definitive enough because he still could have done the crime even if Ducklet was innocent and he can still cut this open with the help of Ponyard. This proves that you know, he wasn't the one to construct all of that. So let's use this one. Okay. That no Trubbish found. We can prove Barnes' innocence with that, can't we? That's exactly what I was thinking. Here's what the note said. Open the window after Barnes leaves. That would be the signal. This is clear proof that Barnes isn't quite the cul isn't the culprit and that the, the real culprit is still out there. So, that deduction is completed. By finding the real culprit, the owner of the note. So there's someone out there behind all this. And not only that, there were multiple culprits working together. Someone who sent Pokemon in from outside and someone inside the mansion who let them in. You think whoever let the Pokemon inside lives in the mansion? That seems like the natural conclusion. But how did the culprit unlock the door to the jewel storage room? Only Barnes and Mr. Dennis can use the key, right? Usually, yeah, but the culprit found a way. A way to what? Think about it, Tim. When did Growlithe say the key disappeared? When she was sleeping, or when she was eating. When she was sleeping. Mm -hmm. She said it disappeared while she was sleeping. That's right, and anyone could have taken the key while Growlithe was asleep. Hmm, I guess you're right. But Growlithe doesn't usually nap. Do you really think that she'd happen to nap right when they were about to commit the crime? That's just it. Think back on what all the different Pokemon of the mansion told us. Did you notice anything they had in common? Anything strange? All of them went to sleep. 
Mm -hmm. All of the Pokemon from the mansion said they fell asleep. That's right, Tim. Glad you noticed that. How can we prove Barnes' innocence now all the way over here? Why did the Pokemon in the mansion fall asleep? According to the testimony, all the Pokemon in the mansion fell asleep. What could have this would have caused this? At the exact same time the jewel was stolen, all the Pokemon in the mansion were asleep. There's no way that's a coincidence. You think someone wanted, wanted it to happen? I'd say the odds of that are pretty high. There's gotta be some kind of evidence we can use to prove that. Let's search the mansion, Tim. So we can begin deducting already. Cramer got sleepy after breakfast. Cramer got sleepy after he ate the breakfast. He fell asleep in the back alley. Ducklet bought coffee beans. Ducklet went to the Hayat Cafe to buy coffee beans. Clefable was sleeping. Clefable became sleepy while playing inside the mansion this morning. So I don't think we're supposed to begin deducing just yet, right? I don't know, if we can look around a little bit the mansion, maybe that'd be the best answer for the time being? I don't know if anybody has anything new to say though, so. I might just wanna to start deducing straight away. I'll do this and then I'll see if I can chat with Growlithe a little bit more. But as it currently stands, Whoa. it seems like there isn't anything new to discover out here. We can still run comically fast, but, uh, and the feather hmm. and everything. Yeah, there's not like a kitchen or anything we can enter. So, I suppose, unless Growlithe has anything extra to add, we should just start deducing straight away. Okay, so Growlithe, she's asking what you want. Do you wanna to talk to her or have her track ascent? Let's talk. She says we can ask away, but there's nothing new. Okay, so yeah, let's just, wait a minute. The food bowl. This is the dish that Growlithe's food was in. There's some sort of powder in it. Hey, Tim, this is sleep powder. Whoa, okay. That's really important information. Wow, you could tell just by looking, Pikachu. I'm a Pokemon, remember? Not to mention a great detective. Of course I can tell what kind of powder this is. It's not even something to brag about. Which means there was sleep powder in the food. I think we can be pretty sure of that. Okay, let's start to So now we're ready to deduce. Ooh, all the information is back together. So our actual little hint here, sleep powder. Sleep powder stuck to a Pokemon's food bowl. Let's begin deducing. Why did the Pokemon in the mansion fall asleep? Did you figure out what caused all the Pokemon in the mansion to fall asleep? First off, we have they went shopping and tired themselves out. Ducklet went to Hi Hat Cafe to buy coffee beans. Maybe the other Pokemon went with her and tired themselves out. I don't think that's likely. Sleep powder was mixed into their breakfast. Sleep powder was found in Groth's food bowl. That powder could have been mixed into all the Pokemon's food. And they tried, they tired themselves out playing. Clefable was playing in the mansion. Maybe all the Pokemon played so much they tired themselves out. Once again, it seems like most of the Pokemon had a normal morning routine, yet they all fell asleep, leading to it being most likely that there was sleep powder in the breakfast. Okay. The Pokemon in the mansion said that they fell asleep after eating breakfast. And in one of the food bowls, we found traces of sleep powder. That leads us to only one possible conclusion. Someone deliberately put that poke put the Pokemon in the mansion to sleep with sleep powder. Well, that's pretty concerning. Someone deliberately put them to sleep using sleep powder. Okay, so what do we do now? Hmm. It's getting easier to picture just how the crime was committed. But where could the culprit have gotten the sleep powder in the first place? In this city, I can think of a few places. But if we follow the path that was used to bring it inside, we might learn more about the culprit. You'll need Growlithe's help again for that, right? Why don't you take a little bit of the powder with, with you just in case? One step ahead of you. Now let's go talk to Growlithe, Tim. So Growlithe's over here. Hey Growlithe, can you take with the sleep powder we found on your dish? Thanks, careful not to sniff up too much though. Okay, now we can follow the scent of the sleep powder, right? Now let's get going, Growlithe. So we're back to tracking down the scent. Hmm, so if I hold it down, of course we can start sniffing. It's a, it's a green color this time. And is there anybody more we can chat with? It looks like not really. Good to know though. And where exactly did it go off to? Way over here. And it looks like straight outside of the mansion. Okay, so we're following it over here. 
and we might be getting a little bit closer. It's gonna keep following it bit by bit, and it goes into the park. Okay. So I'm rushing over this way, and we'll go up the stairs, it won't. It'll go right over here. Maybe to the Lickitung? Uh, it goes right past you guys, but I'll talk to you really fast. I guess not, okay. Uh, all the way up here, and around this corner, right? Yeah, okay. It just keeps going and going. We gotta be getting closer soon, though. Okay, a little bit more. Past the quiz master, and whoa! You're new, you weren't here before. Oh no, Pikachu, the scent stops here. What do we do now? There must be something around here. Let's look around the terrace. Sure. Well, let's talk to the clearly new face over here. Venna. Venna hunts with sparkling red eyes and is much larger than I anticipated. It's a Venna No mistake in those massive eyes. Apparently they can see in the dark. So sparkly. Yes, yes, what is it? Yes. Do you mind if we ask you some questions? Okay, so I'm really busy, but yes, yes. About you, Venonat. Hmm. What's got you so busy? Oh, nothing, I'm just eating, that's all. But I have to eat fast soon, it will be time for dinner, and more eating, yes, yes. You got plenty of time till then though, right? Are you always in such a hurry? Yes, yes, at least that's what everyone tells me, yes. Have you tried maybe chilling out a bit? Can't, this is my natural state, yes, yes, hee <laughs> hee. Okay, but that sure is funny. About this place, hmm. what are you doing here? This spot is great because you can see the whole city and it's lovely and pretty and nice. And on top of that, many, many teeny tiny bugs gather here at night. Oh yes, it's marvelous. Do you like bugs, Ben Nat? Yes, yes, very much so, yes. They're my favorite treat. Your favorite treat? I, uh, I think we could drop this line of questioning. About sleep powder. Hmm. Is this your sleep powder? Nope, definitely not mine, no siree. How can you tell? I use my sleep powder to catch prey. It doesn't smell this soothing or beautiful. Nope, nope, not one bit. I see. I do believe it's Lilligan's fragrance, oh yes. Yeah, and where would we find Lilligan? I would check one of the nearby hedges, probably. No, definitely, yes. To the greenery. Interesting. So thank you for the information, Venonat, but I guess you weren't who we were searching for anyways. The nearby bushes might be our answer like this one right over here. So there's a Lilligan back here? Hello? Oh! Lilligan, floral fashionista. Was it you? It's Lilligan. This Pokemon is known for having an aroma that calms the heart and mind. So that's what that nice smell was. You think I smell nice? You're sweet. Do you mind if we ask you a few questions? Not at all. Your timing is actually perfect. I was just taking a break from dancing. Ask me whatever you like. About you, Lilligan. Hmm. Can you tell me more about yourself? Getting personal, are we? Alas, I'm rather unremarkable. Just a Lilligan with a love for dance. You wouldn't have to look hard to find many others like me. About this place. Hmm. What are you doing here? Why, this is my favorite place. Basking in the sunlight here feels ever so good. And dancing here fills me with endless joy. You dance here a lot then? Yes, sometimes humans and Pokemon even come to watch. Everyone who watches me dances, dance seems to fall asleep, but at least they're smiling when they do. Would you like a demonstration? La la la. Ooh, nice. Uh, I could really use a nap. Wait, Lilligan, please don't dance. About sleep powder. Hmm. Is this your sleep powder? Yes, I recognize the fragrance. Do you remember giving this to anyone? No. You see, my sleep powder just puffs out naturally whenever I dance. Though thinking on it now, there was a human who came to watch me dance recently. Really? Do you remember what they looked like? I'm afraid not. I was in the zone. Hmm, that's rough. Hey, it's something. Thanks for your help, Lilligant. I see. Now we know how to how the sleep powder was obtained. Are we done investigating? 
Uh, I suppose so. Great. Yeah, now I'd like to tell Tim what we found. Let's hurry back, Ralph. Sure. So I guess we're heading straight back over there. I'm a little confused on what exactly we can deduce from that, but if we can find anybody who has that sleeping powder on them, then maybe that's our culprit. I see. So you're still not sure who the culprit is. Right, but we did learn something important. And what's that? Think about it, Tim. The sleep powders sent trail led directly from the mansion to the terrace. Do you really think that's normal? I guess it would make sense if the person who brought the sleep powder already lived in the mansion. Exactly, which makes it even more likely that it was an inside job. So why did the Pokemon in the mansion, we already figured out that one, who could have slipped the Pokemon sleep powder? The culprit mixed sleep powder into the Pokemon's food and led Ponyard into the mansion. Only someone in the mansion could have done this, but who? Someone managed to get some of Lilligan's sleep powder then they mix it into the Pokemon's breakfast. Sure sounds like an inside job to me. Which means the culprit is someone in the mansion. Let's do some more sleuthing and find out who. Okay, so I guess we don't really have any leads for this one, but now we can talk to everybody again. Conduct interviews in the mansion. Sure. Hmm. Ask me anything you like. About Growlithe's food. My staff member, Turner, always prepares the food here. Turner. So obviously Turno's the one we've been most concerned about. Now they're making food. It used to be one of the Bar of Barnes' duties, but the task has fallen to Turner since he joined the staff. He's truly made himself quite useful. Interesting. So I think we should talk to Turner straight away. Yes. Could we please talk to you again, Mr. Turner? Yeah, of course. Ask me anything. About Growlithe's food. Yes. Mr. Dennis is really picky about the ingredients I can use for Growlithe's food. He tells me what to put in it and I make the food to, to his exact specifications. Interesting. So according to Turner, even though if he made the food, the person who would have told him to put the sleeping powder in would have been Mr. Dennis. Sounds like Mr. Dennis really cares about Growlithe's health. Yes, he truly cares about Pokemon. A good egg, that one. Dennis seems like quite the guy. What's healthy and what's tasty don't always match up, though. Yes? Did you still want? Do, did you still want something? Yes, I'm sorry. We really appreciate your help. About Groth's food. Yes. I don't know anything about Groth's food. I would suggest you ask Turner about that. Did you happen to see Groth eating her food today? No, I didn't. I'm not in the habit of watching her eat. The Pokemon of the house eat in separate room from us humans. Interesting. But they all eat together. They, in the same room as us, their fur, feathers, or what have you, could get in our food. So they eat in a different room, on my request, of course. A policy like that's not gonna make you very popular with Pokemon, lady. And I guess we can't talk to Clefable for any more info, but uh, down this way, we can definitely yes. talk to Barnes. I'd be happy to tell you anything I know about Growlithe's food. Yes. I know exactly what kinds of food Growlithe prefers. She's particularly fond of sweets. When I was in charge of her meals, I made a point of preparing sweet desserts for her. You're a good guy, Barnes. You can learn a thing or two from this guy, Tim. Give me more sweets. Is Pikachu all right? He seems to be acting strangely. Don't worry, this is normal for him. Okay, so getting a little bit more information, but is there anybody else really to chat with? We can go upstairs and just make extra sure any of the officers up there. I don't think they would have much info, but what room are the Pokemon okay, fed in? Let's start deducing. I guess not. It looks like Pikachu wants to deduce, so let's get okay, to it. Great. We've got everything we need to make our deductions. Let's solve this puzzle, Tim. Sure. So who could have slipped that Pokemon, this Pokemon sleep powder? Let's find out. Meal preparation. Turner prepares the Pokemon's meals every day. Growlithe's preferences. Barnes used to be in charge of feeding Growlithe and knows what kind of food she likes best. The Pokemon eat in a separate room. At Mrs. Dennis's request, Pokemon and humans eat in separate rooms. Picky about ingredients. Mr. Dennis gave Turner very detailed instructions on the ingredients to use for Growlithe's meals. Interesting. So we have a lot of interesting points of view. Who would have been able to mix sleep powder to Growlithe's food? Let's figure it out using the info we've gathered. Brandon Barnes. Barnes knows what kind of food Growlithe likes. He could have mixed sleep powder into her food without Growlithe noticing a change in taste. 
Claudia Dennis. Mrs. Dennis requests that the Pokemon eat their meals in a separate room from the humans. She couldn't mix the sleep powder into their food without being seen. Sanjeev Dennis. Mr. Dennis chooses every ingredient used in Growlithe's meals. He could have placed his ingredients with sleep powder. Or lastly, Larry Turner. Turner is responsible for preparing the Pokemon's meals. He could have put sleep powder in their food without raising suspicion. And I think that this one matches up with the letter the most. So I think that we need to really choose this one and see how it plays out. Okay. The only person who could have put sleep powder in the Pokemon's meals is Turner. It has to have been him. Bingo. He's in charge of preparing Pokemon's Pokemon meals. He could have easily slipped it into their food. However, this fact alone isn't, to, it isn't enough to implicate Turner. So if we were to combine that though with the letter, Larry Turner, he was in charge of meal preparation. Hmm. Turner's the one who used the sleep powder, but that's just, a, just conjecture. We don't have any hard evidence. We'll definitely need to find some proof, but I'm not sure how. Well, it's kind of an aggressive move, but we could try shaking him up a bit. Let's see if we can make Turner nervous. We might learn something about how on how he acts. Think you're up to it? It's worth a try. So we have to go talk to Turner. So Turner was right over here. No, that's Barnes. Never mind, Turner was right over here. Yes. <laughs> they sort of look similar. Oh, hello, Tim. How's the investigation going? We're actually a bit stuck at the moment. I'm sorry to hear that. Is there anything I could do to help? I was actually hoping to ask you a few more questions, if you don't mind. By all means, ask away. About Cramorant. Excuse me. You've got a partner Cramorant, right, Mr. Turner? How did you know that? It came up while we were gathering statements in the city. Hmm, I see. I hope you don't think I was hiding that fact or anything. I was just afraid he might become a suspect. I did tell the police, of course. Really? It's been a while since I've seen him, actually. Worryingly so. Where could he have gone? Oh, we just saw Cramorant walking back towards the mansion. Why that little, I told him to stay put. Mm hmm, stay put. Why did you tell him that, Mr. Turner? And how would you be able to tell him to stay put if you didn't know where he went? Oh, er, I just didn't want him going on his own. Oh, and I guess he meant stay put in the mansion? I've been so worried that he might have gotten mixed up in the crime somehow. Thank you so much for finding him, Tim. It's such a huge relief. About Ponyard. Mm -hmm. We were thinking a Ponyard may have cut the jewel case. Really? I, I mean, yes, I think you cracked it. So it was a Ponyard that punched you, Mr. Turner? Yes, it most certainly was. It really hurt. In fact, it still hurts. Yeesh, what a terrible liar. Hmm. Based on Turner's reaction, it's pretty clear that he's hiding something. I just wish I'd been able to dig a little deeper. Nah, you did a great job. Now, at the very least, we learned one thing. Cramorant is the, is, is the key to solving this case. All that's left is to ask him herself. So we're going to go see Cramorant. Yep, just you wait, Turner. We'll catch you yet. So interview Cramorant is our next goal. Is there anybody else we can catch up with? I wish we could just, you know, combine our info with the, the police officers, but I guess this is not really something we can do. And it looks like Kramer has made his way out to the plaza a little bit more. Come on, make up your mind already. I can't remember what the other person said. Uh, I guess it's a mystery. All of something looks amazing. Okay, so was there anybody else to chat with? It doesn't really seem like it, so we can just go and talk to Kramer over here. Look, Pikachu, it's Kramer. Aren't you gonna go back to Turner? Didn't make it very far, did ya? Kramer, <laughs> you've been resting because you feel too full to walk. Why is Cramorant the only one that feels so unwell? Growlithe and the others were fine. He must have really overeaten. Or he swallowed something his digestive system can't hit. Hey, wait a second. Hmm, a missing jewel. And now, Cramorant's full belly. What are you thinking, Pikachu? I figured it out! <laughs> Ah, a bolt of brilliance! Whoa! <laughs> oh no! <laughs> Poor Magikarp! The stolen jewel we seek is right over there! Huh? So is he thinking what I'm thinking? Did you figure something out, Pikachu? Oh yeah, I figured it all out! 
Who could have slipped it? Okay, we weren't about that, but where is the stolen jewel? Pikachu seems to have figured out where Turner hid the jewel. Use all the information gathered up to this point to deduce the jewel's whereabouts. I bet you figured it out too, haven't you? All right, here's the final question. Where did Turner hide the jewel? Once you piece together all the information we've gathered so far together, you'll definitely figure it out. So as you can see, our four different hints here, um, starting from the left, Kramer is full. Kramer's belly is still full. Apparently, this is similar to how Kramer feels whenever he gulps down something large. Fluffy cotton. Fluffy cotton found in the jewel storage room. It appears to have been left there by Whimsicott. Ducklet's favorite fountain. Ducklin came to the fountain in Serenity Park to recover from the shock of almost being captured. Growlithe has a good nose. Growlithe is confident in her sense of smell. So let's begin to do something. Okay. I'll give you a hint. The jewel was most certainly taken out of the mansion and a Pokemon was used to do it. A Pokemon? Yeah, think about the unique characteristics of each Pokemon in the mansion. Which one of them has the ideal features for hiding a jewel? Well, there are a couple of options. It's in a Whimsicott's cotton. Whimsicott came to the dentist's residence. Turner probably hid the Aurora drop inside Whimsicott's cotton. It's near Ducklet's favorite fountain. Ducklet was by her favorite fountain in Serenity Park. Turner had her hide the Aurora drop there. It's somewhere in the mansion's garden. The metallic sound Mr. Dennis heard was the sound of Turner throwing the jewel into the garden. He probably planned to have Growlithe fetch the jewel afterward. And then finally, it's inside Cramorant's belly. Cramorant can gulp down large things. Turner probably hit the Aurora drop in Cramorant's belly. Well, if we're trying to follow Turner, I think Cramorant's belly seems like the most obvious choice to me, so that's the one I'm gonna choose. But these all technically okay. are still sort of plausible. Cramorant said he could gulp down anything, right? So the jewel is most likely hidden in his belly. Yes, you got it. Turner made Cramorant swallow the jewel. And the reason he feels full is because he's still got the jewel in his belly. Turner didn't have time to retrieve the jewel after he, uh, after the theft, did he? Nope, I'm positive the jewel is still in Cramorant's belly. Now we have enough evidence to back Turner into a corner. So, now what do we do? Our deduction is finished, Cramorant swallowed it. Awesome. So now if we back up, okay, we've got all the proof we need. Now we just have to catch the culprit. Let's go, to, get, go tell Holiday to gather everyone involved in the case. Are you ready, Tim? I think we are. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let's go. Let's reveal the truth together. Well, now I'm a bit nervous, but you never know. Hopefully we can figure it out. Everybody's here. This is it. Let's take care of business. <laughs> Everyone, thank you for coming. This sudden conference had better be important. It is. We've identified the real culprit. <gasps> Have you now? Yes, Mr. Barnes isn't the one who stole the jewel. Oh, oh. Who did it then? I'll explain everything from the beginning. Let's start with how the culprit entered the jewel storage room. There were no signs of forced entry on the door, so the culprit must have used the key. But Growlithe was guarding the key. No one but my husband or Barnes could have taken the key from Growlithe. Yes, exactly. So how did they... I guess it must have been Barnes, then. No, it wasn't. You see, the culprit had a trick up their sleeve for taking the key. How did the culprit get the key? The door was unlocked, they made Growlithe fall asleep, then stole the key, they broke down the door and didn't use the key, or they bef befriended Growlithe and got the key. I think it's of course the second one, right over here, with the sleeping powder. Alright, that was good! The culprit used sleep powder to make Growlithe fall asleep. And after that, they took the key. Do you have evidence of that? Of course. Take a close look at Growlithe's food bowl, Inspector. You'll find traces of Lilligan's sleep powder in it. Of course. So that's how the culprit got into the jewel storage room. But they couldn't possibly have cut open that sturdy display case in such a short time. Yeah, good point. 
No. They could have if they had Pokémon accomplices. Pokémon? Which Pokémon cut up in the jewel case? Whimsicott, Ponyard, Ducklet, or Clefable? Really the only one who had that has that ability, Ponyard with its bladed hands cut open the jewel case. The culprit somehow used Whimsicott and Ponyard and got Ponyard to cut open the case. What? How is that even possible? Oh, he's looking nervous. We may understand now how the jewel was stolen. But that doesn't necessarily prove that Barnes is innocent. Actually, I do have proof that Mr. Barnes is innocent. What evidence proves that Barnes is not the culprit? The note that the accomplice wrote, the key to the jewel case, Ducklet's bag, or Whimsicott cotton. So the note that the accomplice wrote, the note contains a plan for framing Barnes for the crime. The jewel case was locked. Barnes is not the culprit because he can't use that key. Ducklet's bag is jam-packed with coffee beans, so Barnes couldn't have hidden the stolen jewel with it. Whimsicott was involved in the crime, but there's no connection between Whimsicott and Barnes, so it's impossible for Barnes to have committed the crime. It is definitely the note that is trying to frame Barnes for the crime itself. We discovered this note in a Trubbish's possession. Uh, a note? The culprit jotted down their whole plan. They wanted to frame Mr. Barnes for the crime. Then that would mean... Barnes is innocent. So who's the real culprit? The real culprit is right here with us. What do you mean? Who is the culprit? Larry Turner. The culprit is Larry Turner. Brandon Barnes, Claudia Dennis, or Sanjeev Dennis. It has to be Turner, but he stole it. But who wrote the letter is the question. I'm not quite sure. That we don't really have too many leads on, but for right now, we're gonna say Larry Turner. The thief who stole the Aurora drop. It's... Mr. Turner, you're the culprit. Uh, who, me? But, but, but I'm a victim of this crime. Ponyard punched me. It punched you, huh? Ponyard has blades for hands. And I don't see any cuts on you. If you really think I'm the culprit, then where's the jewel? I don't have it on me, and I haven't set foot outside the mansion. Where's the jewel? Isn't it obvious? It's with a Pokemon. What? Ooh, this is getting intense. Which Pokemon has the jewel? Cramorant, Ponyard, Clefable, or Ducklet? It has to be Cramorant. Of course you don't have the stolen jewel. You hid it. In Cramorant's belly. Uh, excuse me? Cramorant's maybe Turner's partner, but even so... Where is that Cramorant anyway? Mr. Turner. You clearly put a lot of thought into your plan. But when we investigated the crime scene, we found a Cramorant feather. And you underestimated Growlithe's sense of responsibility. Those two things did you in. Now, please call your Cramorant. Here we go. <clears throat> <laughs> Cramorant. All right, let me handle this. All right, you're gonna speak in two of this cute little walk. Ah! Whoa! That is way there bigger than is. I thought it'd be. The Aurora drop, and the, and the key, key to the storage room too. I'm afraid you can't talk your way out of this, Mr. Turner. <sighs> I was so close to living the easy life. I shouldn't have teamed up with someone I barely knew. Who is his teammate? Hmm. 
I'm sure Holiday will look into, the, into his accomplice. Right, let's leave that to the police. Was I wrong this whole time? For us here, the Aurora Drop was a symbol of hope. I thought I could bring hope to even more people. That's why I decided to donate it. But I never thought it would lead to an incident like this. Maybe I should forget about donating it and just keep it quietly locked up in the house. Goodness gracious, you of all people? Do you really think so little of the Aurora Drop? What are you saying, Claudia? Didn't you tell me yourself? that you hoped whoever looked at the Aurora Drop would not only see its beauty, but also feel cheered up and encouraged by it? Are you really going to give up on that hope just because of a stroke of bad luck? Wouldn't that be a terrible waste? Don't you agree, Barnes? Indeed, madam, uh, it's just as you say. Mr. Dennis, your plan to donate the jewel to the people of Rhyme City was most certainly not a mistake. Please believe in yourself and do what you think is best. Claudia, Barnes, forgive me. I think I let myself get too shaken by what happened today. I believe it's the beauty of the Aurora Drop and the people of Rhyme City, as you should. Cliffable, <laughs> but Claudia, weren't you against the donation? Don't misunderstand me. I just don't want to deal with you moping around like this for the rest of our lives, that's all. <laughs> I see, thank you, Claudia. This incident was has forced me to reconsider, shall we say, some of my views. Clefable, Ducklet, Growlithe, let's all eat together from now on. Aww. Looks like Mr. Dennis and the others are all getting along better now. Yeah, that's about wraps it up. Ironic, huh? Crammerin swallowed the jewel, and now you've got to swallow the bitter consequences. Well, let's go. Yeah. What is that? Cremorin, are you all right? Oh no. Uh oh. Watch out! No, don't do it! Cremorin swallowed it again! Don't just stand there. Hurry up and grab it. Right. Uh-oh. Now we got a problem. We got a runaway Cramorant. And there it goes. Yikes. How could this be happening? Sanjeev. Turner! Hold on. I swear I had nothing to do with that. Why don't we discuss this down at the station? Now things have taken an interesting turn. I really think Turner didn't have anything to do with that part. What was that cube on the back of Cramorant and why was it glowing like that? Somehow solving this case has left us with more questions than answers. Growlithe, you did a great job. <coughs> hey, Pikachu. Look! Whoa! Oh! Are you leaving already? See you around! God. Say, Tim, did you notice Cramorant's back? Yeah, there was something glowing on it. I've never seen anything like it. I wonder, maybe Turner didn't know what was going on. Something tells me. This is just the beginning. I, I think I agree with Pikachu here. Something really is up about that. But maybe the more we play, the more we can find out. Later that evening at Tim's apartment. I'm home. Tim's back! Hi. Well, you sure are home late. Good evening. Oh, and who is this? My classmate, Rachel. It's nice to meet you. Is she your girlfriend? Oh no. Huh? If only. <laughs> All right, I guess we're back home. Actually, Rachel's here because... Hello, sorry to barge in so suddenly. I was hoping to get some advice from the great detective here. 
I didn't realize his family was visiting, though. Welcome, Rachel. We didn't mean to startle you. Sophia and I just arrived in Rhyme City yesterday. We came to see my brother's award ceremony. Oh, really? Then this is probably the first time you've all seen each other in a while. I really hope I'm not in the way. Please, don't worry about it. We'll be, down, we'll be in town for a while yet. Make yourself at home. I'll make some tea. Thank you, really. See, Tim? I told you Irene and Sophia would understand. Yeah, you're right, I'm glad. So I guess now we get to hang out here and wow, there's a lot of things to do. Uh, yeah, I don't think we need to look at any of that. So let's talk to Pikachu first. Harry's a pretty lucky guy to have Sophia and Irene by his side, huh? I agree, and hopefully we can find Harry so he can be back by their side soon. All right, let's talk yes. to Rachel first. It must be nice spending time with your mother and sister. It is, yeah, but hey, didn't you want to discuss something? Oh, um, yeah. Sorry, it must feel awkward to talk about it around so many people. No, it's not that. Chatting with you and your family has actually helped a lot. Trust me, it can wait. Really? Well, if you're sure. Yep. So Rachel's not your girlfriend? Nope, just a classmate. She came by to talk to me about something. Something like, how she's your girlfriend? Sophia, she is not my girlfriend. Atta girl, Sophia. Tim just needs a gentle shove to get things moving. Don't you start too, Pikachu. All right, well, let's go talk to our mom over here. Oh wait, no, this was, these are the mails we received. Okay, I know, I know. Here. Right. You really don't need to worry about it, Tim. Huh? Worry about what? Bringing Rachel home, of course. Uh, Mom, I think you might be misunderstanding something. I'm making enough food for eight people or so, so she can eat as much as she likes. Oh, you're talking about dinner. Wait, eight people? Isn't that a bit much? Right. Okay. I guess we're having dinner. ready, everyone. <laughs> well, I should probably get going. Come now, why don't you stay and eat with us? Yeah, that's a great idea. Well, you heard them. What do you say? I mean, who could turn down an invitation like that? Yay! Eat up, everyone. I really outdid myself this time. Wow, looks amazing. Thank you, Mom. Mom made her special mac and cheese for us. So this is the dish that Harry kept raving about, huh? <laughs> Oh, well, Pikachu gets some too. It looks so yummy. Whoa, this is incredible. Good, huh? Mm. <laughs> uh oh. Oh no. What's going on with Pikachu? That's not good. Is he okay? Whoa, what's happening? The mac and cheese nightmare. They say not to have dairy before bed, but nothing about dinner. Irene, we need to talk. What is it? I want a divorce. What? Oh no. Are you joking? Take care of Tim and Sophia for me. Where is this coming from? I'm sorry. Harry, there must be some reason. <laughs> I'm sorry, Irene. Harry. That's so sad. So maybe the food triggered <sighs> Pikachu's memory. Are you okay, Pikachu? You had me worried suddenly fainting like that. Uh, I fainted? Yes. Oh, thank goodness. It looks like Pikachu's recovered. Yeah, I think he's okay now. So, Rachel, do you feel okay talking about what problem you had now? No, that's okay. Are you sure? You don't have to keep it bottled up. I had so much fun with you all that it's not, just not bothering me anymore. We'll discuss it next time, okay? Sure. In that case, what if I ask you something instead? By all means, I'd be honored to help a great detective. 
Do you happen to know anyone who knows a lot about jewels? Apparently, the jewel that was stolen in today's case was really special. I could use some information to help me track it down. Hmm, well, one of my professors is a specialist in the mineral, in mineral archaeology. I could introduce you to him if you like. Really? Could you please? That would be a huge help. Sure, I'll sort it out when I get home tonight. How should I contact you? Why don't we meet at the Hi Hat Cafe tomorrow morning? Sounds good, see you then. All right, so I guess we'll be meeting Rachel tomorrow, but whoa, what's going on now? Hey, feeling better? Yeah, I guess. Pikachu. Huh? What's that? Whoa! You, you too. too! There is something the two of you must know. When I was in my cave a few days ago, I was attacked by several Pokemon. Yeah, we saw on the news. No matter how many times I overpowered them, they didn't seem to feel a thing. Maybe R again? No. These Pokemon had no will of their own, as if something was controlling them. As for Harry... Harry? <gasps> Uh-oh. Big trouble! Here they come again. These were the same Pokemon that attacked Mewtwo. And they all have that cube. Look. Those lights, like the one we saw in Cramorant. You think the two are related somehow? I'd say, almost certainly. Finding the Aurora Drop may be the key to solving this mystery. Yeah, let's follow up on that. Oh no. <laughs> Who was that? The Cramorant that stole the Aurora Drop. The swarm of Beedrill that attacked Mewtwo. They both had glowing devices stuck to them. After hearing Mewtwo say my dad's name, I think if I investigate the Aurora Drop, that I might get closer to finding him. So we wrapped up our first major case in the game and it was so exciting. But as you can see, we were left with way more questions than answers throughout this one. And now we have Mewtwo to help as well. There is definitely something more major happening behind the scenes and I can't wait to find out what it is in the next day. But for right now, that is gonna wrap it up for today's episode of Detective Pikachu Returns. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye bye.